Can eyewitness reports of UFO sightings really be believed? Are some accounts nothing more than deliberate lies? How many of the most widely accepted UFO encounters were in fact nothing more than mistakes or practical jokes? The battle between true and false evidence in this chapter of UFO Diaries. One of the most remarkable stories in the UFO Diaries began on the night before Halloween, 1938. The famous actor and director Orson Welles led his Mercury Theater of the Air in a radio drama in the form of a news broadcast, telling their listening audience that invaders from Mars were rapidly conquering the entire Earth. In spite of announcements telling everyone the show was dramatized, thousands believed it was a real event, and panic broke out across the country. Orson Welles and the members of the Mercury Theater seemed to have proven that a story about invaders from another planet could be readily believed by thousands, even when there's not one scrap of truth behind it. For all practical purposes, they had invented the UFO hoax. Did you get that? Have Did you make your money left? But according to many UFO researchers, that hoax would by no means be the last. Yeah. Right. In the last 50 years, there have been hundreds of people who have come forward with uh, various UFO claims. But it, la it later turned out upon investigation that these people were in fact hoaxers. The hoaxes themselves can range from uh, simply taking a uh, a UFO picture, to writing books claiming uh, that the individual had uh, flown to Venus on a UFO. In some cases, uh, the individuals will present evidence uh, which supposedly backs up their story, but again, upon investigation, the evidence um, proved not to be valid. Because of hoaxers, UFO researchers have been forced to provide more evidence for their claims. So for all of us seeking the real truth behind the UFO phenomena, hoaxes and frauds are a continual nuisance, especially when they are accepted by a large number of people as being the real truth. But how can hoaxes be detected? What methods do UFO researchers use to determine the credibility of a UFO report? It's generally helpful to consider the motivations of a person um, presenting a UFO report. Historian Curtis Peebles tells how the truth behind one UFO report was discovered. Um, in 1950, a man named Frank Scully wrote a book titled Behind the Flying Saucers. In it, he claimed that the US government had recovered a crashed flying saucer near Aztec, New Mexico. Scully said he had been told um, the story of the crash by a millionaire oil man named Silas Newton. Now look, I'm giving you the story of the century, and if you know what's good for you, you're gonna take it and run with it. That may be true, but I'm not gonna write no story based on the evidence you told me. I have a reputation at stake. Now look, uh, what if I were to give you some incontrovertible, verifiable proof that what I'm telling you is true? What kind of undeniable proof can you show me? And now you take a look at these. Uh, Newton described this disc as having remarkable qualities that no earthly material could match. Scientists in the country test it. He says it's bona fide. If he says it is, you know it is. All right, Silas, I'll test these. And if they're true, I'll write your story. That's all I want. In fact, it was ordinary aluminum, the same as used in pots and pans. It had taken one very resourceful newspaper man named J.P. Kahn to uncover the truth behind the story. Uh, they used the crash saucer story to defraud investors in their various oil exploration schemes. We tell them we got out of space, man, and we sell them uh, shares at $50 per. And uh, we say, hell, these guys are going back and forth between worlds. They sure as hell can dig a well. Subsequently right. led to their arrest and conviction on fraud charges. The Aztec incident and J.P. Kahn's exposure of the hoax illustrate how much confusion a hoax can cause in the field of UFO research. But what kind of evidence can be believed? After all, with many UFO sightings, there seems to be no real proof at all. Only one person's story of what they claim they saw. 
is it in fact impossible to obtain real proof of visitors from outer space, even now that humankind has begun its own exploration of space? It would seem difficult to stage a false UFO sighting here. So would an astronaut's report of unidentified flying objects be considered undeniable evidence? During the early days of manned spaceflight, UFO sightings by astronauts seem to have been fairly common. But now UFO researchers are divided on how many of these accounts can be considered reliable. In some cases, the astronaut sightings were caused by simple mistakes by the astronauts themselves. One good example is the sighting which occurred on Gemini 4 by Jim McDivitt. Uh, he describes seeing a, a large cylindrical object with an arm sticking out of its side passing relatively close to the spacecraft. It wasn't until many years later that the object was identified as being Gemini 4's own booster rocket, which was in a similar orbit. It was a, a simple mistake, but it wasn't an alien spaceship. It seems some UFO incidents may be hoaxes. Others may be little more than mistaken identity. So what kind of evidence is truly undeniable? Can we believe a UFO sighting that leaves visible traces? and is photographed by dozens of observers, and that continues to occur night after night? Or could even this kind of sighting somehow be faked? One of the most controversial events in UFO history, the Gulf Breeze sightings, when UFO diaries return. Some of the most talked about UFO reports of all time have come from this one small part of Florida. Gulf Breeze. Located between Eglin Air Force Base and the Pensacola Naval Air Station, it seems reasonable for the sky over Gulf Breeze to often be filled with aircraft. But these flying objects are not what one might expect to see. Yeah, in November of 1987, a builder in Gulf Breeze, Florida, by the name of Ed Walters, said that while he was working at his desk, he noticed a light outside his window. When he went out to check, it was a UFO craft. He happened to have a camera. He took a picture of a very clear kind of lantern-shaped object. In quick succession over the next few weeks, he was able to take a whole bunch more very clear UFO photos that many ufologists have both endorsed and found to be maybe a little too perfect, if you catch my drift. He had a lot of other elements to this story that are a little strange to accept. Uh, Ed had a situation where he was lifted up towards the craft and apparently dropped back down, although we're not sure if there wasn't perhaps more that happened to that. He had a lot of uh, incidents of aliens apparently talking to him in his mind. There's a videotape which is extremely dramatic of the craft which um, Ed took. Ed was also being abducted in the middle of these experiences, some of which he's recalled uh, consciously, some with hypnotic regressions. Very dramatic uh, content revealed. As intriguing as this story may be, how much of it do we know for a fact? The best evidence of Walter's account is the photographs, but do they really prove anything? He has people that are residents of the Gulf Breeze region who uh, corroborate his report by having seen the same type of craft. Unfortunately, there haven't been other residents in Gulf Breeze that have taken similarly clear pictures. Dr. Bruce McAbee, who is an uh, uh, optical physicist and uh, a very respected scientist, works for the government, as a matter of fact, uh, has analyzed the films, the cameras, the whole situation, and uh, uh, testified to the authenticity of the pictures. And it's a very solid, very powerful case. It would seem the Gulf Breeze sightings make up the most reliable and credible accounts ever of an encounter with UFOs. But could even these reports somehow be false? Apparently, the Gulf Breeze sightings have split the UFO research field into two factions, those who believe in Ed Walter's story and those who do not. There are many inconsistencies with the Ed Walters case. For Mr. William G. Heiser, an independent photographic analysis person that was retained by myself through the Polaroid Corporation, has stated that photograph 19, without a doubt, is definitely a double exposed picture. Photo 19 was a picture of a UFO taken on a roadway. Uh, the truck that Ed Walters was driving in was off of the roadway. He took this picture through the windshield of his truck. It shows an object allegedly hovering over the roadway, shining a light from the bottom of the craft onto the roadway. There is no reflection. 
of the UFO in the hood of the truck. The object is what we call in the envelope area of the picture, which means that there very definitely should be lumicity reflecting off of the hood of the truck. Ed Walter's son, uh, Danny, has a friend named Tommy, who later came out and claimed that he helped Ed Walter's manufacture some of the photos. And Walter's subsequently denied a lot of what was going on. And when the evidence came out that Walter's had also been a party to making fake pictures during some of his children's parties, it began to look suspicious to a lot of UFO researchers. I think there's a lot that needs to be looked into. There was a model found in a home previously owned by Ed Walters. This home was bought by Sarah and Robert Menzer. Uh, the man found uh, in the attic a model of uh, a spaceship made out of uh, blueprints. Uh, the paper, it was a paper model made out of blueprints that had Ed Walters' name on it. It is my opinion that Ed Walters used this model in the beginning, it was one of the prototypes that he started. He probably made many models. This was one of the earlier models. And by the way, this was not a model that was shown in any of the pictures that Ed Walters took. In my opinion, Ed put the model there after reporters and investigators had come over to his house. And rather than trash it or put it into a drawer where maybe an investigator might want to search his, his bedroom or whatever looking for that type of thing, he decided to put it under the insulation in the attic and just left it there, figuring it would probably never be found. Uh, they were saying, Ed Walters is very smart. He's faked all these pictures. And when he moved out, he took every single object that he owned except this one incriminating piece of evidence. That already is a suspicious thing. The debate over the Gulf Breeze UFOs has gone on for years. But are researchers any closer to a conclusion? Are the Gulf Breeze sightings true or false? To this day, uh, the story is not corroborated by anything more than other visual reports by residents of Gulf Breeze. And uh, there are some parts to the story that, that are uh, considered unusual or unexplainable by some other researchers who have looked into it. Mr. Ed Walters has claimed to have passed four polygraph tests. Actually, he took two polygraph tests and two PSE tests. However, all the tests that he passed were self-sponsored tests. And self-sponsored tests are considered by any polygraph expert worth his salt to be an invalid test. Uh, and there's strong evidence that evidence has been planted to try to discredit the case. The blueprints that this thing was made out of, and Ed had thrown away a lot of blueprints on the sidewalk, so it was very easy for somebody. In the movie, he had all this junk he was throwing out. These were Xeroxes of things. Obviously, uh, somebody could pick this up and the idea that, of course, he would construct this out of his own blueprints is a little odd. But uh, this was a way of tying it to him. But when they analyzed the blueprints, they found out that uh, these blueprints were of a drawing, series of drawings that he had made uh, a couple of years after the pictures were taken, uh, showing that this could not possibly have been the object. And yet one key question continually arises. Why? Why would Ed Walters create such an elaborate deception? When Ed Walters realized how easily the Gulf Breeze investigators were accepting his photographs, he decided, in my opinion, to make more. It then became a national story. And by that time, in my opinion, he realized he could never turn back. It would be too embarrassing. And besides, in my opinion, he was having fun. So the debate over Gulf Breeze continues and leads us to the question, can we ever really prove a UFO event? What would it take to convince the most hardened skeptic? What if someone claimed to have not only seen a UFO, but to have seen the beings inside the craft and claimed to have physical evidence to prove it? Um, since the late 1970s, there have been an increasing number of people who have described being forcibly taken aboard a flying saucer and then subjected to terrifying experiments. Yet, despite all the hundreds of cases, there's very little in the way of solid, tangible evidence that these events are actually occurring. What is the real truth behind abduction experiences? A startling answer when UFO Diaries returns. Few aspects of the UFO phenomenon are more troubling than the reports of abductions. According to a number of people who claim to have had the experience, alien intruders have kidnapped them often from their own homes, brought them aboard their own craft and subjected them to medical examination. 
But have these stories been proven to describe real events? If somebody remembers being abducted out of an automobile or a backyard or a car or, or a bedroom or something, very often that person is literally missing and is being searched for. We have many cases where the police are called, uh, hours long searches take place and the person magically turns up exactly back in the place they had disappeared from. Furthermore, they come back with unusual marks on their bodies, with scars, with scoop marks, with bruises, and the scar, the scar might be extraordinarily dramatic, three, four, five, seven inches long, and we have this many, many times. But do scars that seem to appear from nowhere and episodes of missing time really constitute tangible proof that these abduction experiences are real? In terms of hoaxes, outright hoaxes with abductions, I think they're very, very rare. Uh, the point is, if somebody comes to you and says, uh, I have these memories, I remember, you know, these little people around the bed, I remember floating out a window, I remember this and that. I don't know whether I'm going crazy or not. I've been to a therapist, I, I don't know what to make of this. It really upsets me. Taking UFOs seriously and especially reporting them is uh, very difficult for many people, it may even be dangerous for them given uh, the fact that there's so much ridicule associated with it. Anyone who sees a UFO is often accused of being insane, uh, hallucinating, or drunk, and it's been so for 100 years at least. Abductees know that something strange, unusual, maybe even horrific has happened to them, but they have a very, only a very vague, in most cases, very vague memory of what it is. But they know something's there and somehow they don't seem to be able to get to what it is. Ever since the Barney and Betty Hill case, the typical means of getting to what happened to them has been hypnosis. So why don't we count backwards from 10? Okay. Three, two, one. 10, 10, 9, sit on that ship. Hypnosis does seem to open up this memory block or whatever is, is preventing recollection. And what comes out is this quite elaborate and sometimes horrific story of the, uh, of the abduction with physical examination, strange beings, the whole, the whole familiar uh, works. Does hypnosis indicate alien abductions are real? Or does it prove that something quite different may be happening? Hypnosis has a lot of problems. Its reputation is something almost mystical, has, has haunted it for a long time. It also has some very serious uh, questions among in the scientific community. Now, we're going to count from 10 to 0. One experiment right. uh, was carried out uh, in the uh, late 1970s uh, by Alvin Lawson, a professor of English, and uh, several associates, where they took some people who did not claim UFO abductions and hypnotized them to see what kind of uh, abduction story they would give out. Well, they gave out a story that was, in some respects, quite similar to the normal abduction story. And Lawson concluded that, uh, well, if people can tell an abduction story that's a reasonable facsimile of the real one, without uh, ever having the story, ever having the experience, then there must be no experience underlying it that, uh, in fact, we do have enough, you know, basic information in our heads that anybody can tell a convincing abduction story under hypnosis. Uh, and therefore, there's no reason to believe that there's any sort of genuine experience underlying these stories. Does this experiment prove that so-called abductees are telling the truth? Or are they only relating some experience they imagined that somehow seems as real to them as any other? Hypnosis is certainly no absolute truth serum. It's no proof that the uh, remembered event is true. People can confuse reality and imagination while under hypnosis. But many UFO researchers believe the abduction stories are still significant, whether they were obtained through hypnosis or not. If you had to just explain what people remember consciously with no hypnosis involved, it would be a massive problem for the skeptics to deal with. We use hypnosis because it works. It seems that some UFO researchers have indeed set a high standard for the kind of evidence they will accept as genuine. 
So how many UFO reports survive this kind of scrutiny? How will we finally know when we have undeniable evidence? The quest for final proof when UFO diaries return. If intelligent beings from another world are visiting us here on Earth, it seems reasonable to believe they are far superior to us in intelligence and technology. With this logic, one might suspect that they would be able to study us, even interact with us, without ever leaving positive evidence of their presence here. Does this mean then that we'll never be able to prove or disprove the existence of extraterrestrial beings on Earth? It is a, it's a question of evidence. Are the abduction accounts alone sufficient to pr prove the event is occurring? Or is something more tangible needed? Something like, say, uh, the landing on the White House lawn? I don't understand the motivation for, for making general statements like, if these things exist, where's the, where's the physical evidence? All elements of physical evidence that you could possibly want exist. We have pieces of material that allegedly came from a flying saucer in private hands. We have landing trace cases where the UFOs, the flying saucers, interact with the environment, and there are things that can be studied there. We have photographic cases where the computer enhancement techniques and whatnot have not been able to tell us a mechanism for hoaxing the photos. We have not found the strings holding the object up, for example. There are videotapes. There are movie footage. There are good eyewitness accounts from credible individuals. There are multiple witness cases. Every criticism offered by the debunkers, and I separate the debunkers from the skeptics, but every uh, explanation offered by the debunkers as a reason for not believing in the UFO phenomenon is not a credible reason. Because people have been seeing UFOs on every continent in every culture dating back hundreds or thousands of years all over the world. Millions and millions of people and these are eyewitnesses. If it was in a court of law, their testimony would be enough to send you away to jail. But because it's UFOs, it's weird, well that can't be true. I think uh, probably 90% of all UFO sightings are misidentifications of, of uh, explainable phenomenon. But it's also true that nine out of 10 UFO sightings aren't reported at all. We really have no idea how many people over the years have seen these things, but the numbers are staggering and, uh, and the, the reports are consistent. Uh, the question of whether humans are alone in the universe has been debated for centuries. Um, the answer may come sooner than we expect and in ways uh, we cannot anticipate. But until then, the world still waits for absolute proof of the truth or falsehood of UFOs. And we will continue to watch the skies and carefully record every bit of evidence in the UFO diary.